Hello, everyone. Welcome to the eighth episode of this Deep Learning with PyTorch series. So uh, yeah, finally we will get started with neural networks. So so far what we are doing were uh, like the basic understandings of linear regression and logistic regression, and that is kind of the groundwork which we were de doing to move to the uh, world of neural networks, right? Uh, okay. So in this video, I will I will talk what is a neural network, how we can represent that, and what is a forward propagation, right? Now let's start with what is uh, like we have seen what is a uh, logistic regression, right? So if I uh, just represent the logistic regression. So let me take a pen. OK, so these if these are my inputs, right? X1, X2 and X3, then uh, we have a hidden layer. Sorry. We have a hidden layer where this inputs are coming in. Here two operations are mainly going on the linear and non-linear. Then we finally get the Y hat prediction. So this is what uh, a simple logistic regression is uh, going on. Now here we are only using a single node, right? So this is the only one node. Now if we can uh, stack these nodes, stack multiple nodes, right? Like if I represent in this way, my inputs are X1, X2, X3, and then we have multiple nodes, right? Instead of one node, I am using multiple nodes, right? And then similarly, we will pass our input features to this each of these nodes in this way. And then we have a last uh, one single node at this uh, place and we get the final output, right? And here in each of these nodes, two operations are always going on, like the linear part and the activation function, which gives us the A or the non-linearity, which we introduce by using an activation function, right? So this is what we are doing, like we are uh, stacking multiple nodes on top of each other and also we are getting a node at the output to get the final output right so this we can call as a neural network where nodes are stacked on top of each other and uh, and also we can have a single node at different layers right so this all this this is like a one layer and this is also a, another layer right so if i uh, denote this so this is kind of an input layer Right, so this is kind of an input layer which we have. Then this is my hidden layer, right? And the last one where we have, this is my output layer. So this is how we uh, name this in case of neural networks, right? So the input layer is nothing but the combinations of features which are stacked on top of each other. And uh, in the hidden layer, we generally have uh, one or multiple nodes. Generally, we have more than one nodes and that we also stack on top of each other and we get the hidden layer and in the end we will have an output layer, right? So this is how you can uh, we can go from logistic regression to neural networks, right? Simply with this representation. Now let's go in, in detail and see what this are, right? So as I mentioned, like log logistic regression is nothing but a neural network with one node and we can have uh, uh, this representation which I have uh, talked about already. This is a neural network with one hidden layer. Then we can also have multiple hidden layers, right? And this is a neural network with two hidden layers and uh, this is a representation of uh, neural network with five hidden layers, right? So while counting the hidden layers, we do not consider the input and the output layer. So we only uh, count the uh, in between la layers uh, of my network, right? Uh, OK, now let's see um, how the representation works, right? So for this, the same example which we were taking, like we have stacked here four nodes in the hidden layer and this is we are calling as layer one and then we have a layer two which is nothing but the output layer right and this is how we can create a neural network so the first stack of nodes we are calling as layer one and also we have the second second uh, layer which we 
are calling as output layer. Right, uh, and the output layer consists only one node and this this layer, the layer one consists of four nodes, right? Now in each of these nodes, right? In each of these nodes, two operations are going on uh, one by one. One is like uh, the linear operation, which is nothing but W transpose X plus B, which kind of gives us the Z value. Then uh, the Z is getting passed through activation function and we are getting A1, right? And for this layer, which is like for layer one, the inputs are like my input features and uh, W1 and B1, which are the parameters of this network. So for this network, my parameters are W1 and B1, right? And for this layer, my parameters are W2 and B2, which are getting passed during the uh, operations in the second layer, right? So these are kind of input to this layer. And then we are doing the linear operation, which is like W transpose uh, w transpose multiplied by the previous layer output. So the output of this layer is A1, right? So that A1 is getting fed here or used here, and then we add the bias term and we get the Z2. And once we get the Z2, we pass through an activation function and then we get the representation of A2, right? And in the end, we compare my A2. So this A2 is nothing but Y hat, right? And we compare my Y with Y hat and we uh, calculate the loss with this, right? So this is how the representation is working in case of a uh, two layer neural network, right? Now, uh, now let's see how the dimensions or how we can name uh, the different layers, right? As I mentioned, like this is the input layer uh, where the input features are kind of stacked on and this is a hidden layer and this is an output layer. So why we are calling this as a hidden layer is because this hidden layer, uh, this layer is not exposed to either at the input uh, or at the output layer. So this is kind of hidden uh, to the input and output, right? So that's why we kind of call it as a hidden layer. And this layers are not seen in the training set also. So this layer which are like st four nodes are st stacked on top of each other. So this is also not included in the training data set, right? So it is what we are creating while designing the neural network. And uh, in the end, using the hidden layer output, we are calculating the output, right? And output is kind of generating y hat which we compare with the actual value to calculate the loss now uh, let's see how we can uh, calculate the shape of this w and b so this all this layer have associated w and b right let's see how we can calculate the shape of this so uh, if i represent this uh, using a drawing right so this is my input layer where my input uh, are kind of input features are kind of stacked on top of each other x1 x2 and x3 and then we have my hidden layer where uh, three nodes are present here so to calculate the shape of this layer weights right so how we can do is we can calculate the shape of w of number of current node uh, or the current layer nodes then we need to also know the number of nodes in the previous layer. So you, if you see, this is the value of my uh, current. So this is the value of my current layer number of nodes. So as there are three nodes, one, two and three, right? So this is the value of my current layer uh, number of nodes. Then this is the previous layer number of nodes, right? So previous layer, we also have three features. That's why this is also three. And for bias, the uh, we can calculate the shape as number of current layer nodes, which is same as W, which is like three. And then we have one because for every nodes. We have only one bias, right? So uh, that is the like for this is like uh, one bias for this also one bias and this is for also one bias. So this is the shape of this would be three comma one. Right. So similarly for output layer, the same uh, concept, the current number of current layer nodes. So here only we have one node. So that's why this is one and also this is one and the number of nodes in the previous layer for 
calculating the shape of W2, right? So here we have three nodes which is coming from this layer. So here uh, the shape of W2 is 1 comma 3. And similarly for B2, the shape is 1 comma 1, right? So this is how you can uh, calculate the shape of weights and biases for different layers, right? So for an example, like if there are four nodes here, if I add another node here, the shape of W1 would be 4 comma 3, right? And shape of B1 would be 4 comma 1, right? So this is how we can calculate the shape of my uh, parameters of my neural network. Right now, let's go and look deep into a single node, right? So I am just selecting the first node for reference, which is uh, like the first node of my hidden layer. Now, uh, how we can represent the weights associated to this node, right? So the weights associated to this node will depends on the number of features that are present in the input layer, right? So here we have three features. So this three features has an arrow connected to my this node, right? So uh, now how we denote this is W1, then uh, within suffix we have 1, 1, right? So this denotes the layer on which I am on. I am in, so I am at the first layer. So this is uh, the value of this is 1. Then we have 1, 1. So this 1 means I am at the first uh, node of my first layer, right? So this is the current node. So this is my current node where this is the first node of my hidden layer. So this value is one. Then this value is this is coming from uh, which node from the previous layer. So this is also coming from the first. Node from the first layer, so that's why this value is one, right? So similarly for uh, like if the weights associated with. This would be W1 then 1 2, right? So this is the weights associated with the input feature related to X2 and this is for the X3, right? So similarly, we can represent for other nodes which are present here. So this is for the first node of my hidden layer and this is for the second node and this is for the third node. So the shape looks like is 3 comma 3 cross 3, right? Because we have three nodes in this layer. So I am for the illustration purpose. I'm only showing the three uh, only one node out of the three, but here we have three nodes. If you go back to the previous uh, drawing, right? So the output would be three cross three, right? So this is my first layer weight representation, which is three cross three and this many. These are the weights which are associated with the first layer. Now let's see what are the operations going on at this first node, right? So at first, uh, we are doing the linear operations, which is like X1 multiplied by W1 uh, and suffix of 1, 1. And this is like the all the multiplications, like X1 will be multiplied by this value. X2 will be multiplied with this and X3 will be multiplied with this. Then we take the summation of this each terms, right? And we will get the Z11 as an output of my linear operation, right? So once we have the linear operation, we can do the nonlinear operations using this, where we will use the sigmoid activation function or any activation functions. And then we pass my Z11 to this activation function to get the output as 11, uh, A11, right? So A11 would be the output from this specific node, right? Now we can uh, get uh, the similar things from the other nodes of this layer. So if you see, this is how the uh, calculations in each of the nodes for, of my layer one is going on. This is like first layer, right? So here uh, the linear operations which I already talked about. So similarly for other nodes, we are having linear and nonlinear operations and uh, and we can represent this in a uh, stacked form, right? So we can uh, stack the inputs in this way, like X1, X2, X3, which will be nothing but X. Then we have my Z1 associated. Z1 is the output of the linear operations from the first layer, right? And using this Z1, we can also calculate my A1, right? Which is like the stacking of each of those uh, A's which are coming from different nodes of this layer, right? So uh, we we have our inputs. So using our input, sorry, using using our input, we kind of calculate my Z1. Then using my Z1, we can kind of calculate my A1, 
right? So this is how the operations are going on inside each of the nodes and how we can represent using a stacking uh, by multiple nodes output, right? OK, now see what a forward propagation is, right? So as I mentioned, like we have uh, different nodes in my uh, first layer. So in the first layer, we can get different linear operations like Z11, Z12 and Z13, right? So this this is like uh, from first node, this is from the second node and this is from the third node. So once we uh, get this Z, like this is uh, the operations which you can do uh, using a matrix notation, right? So once we do the linear operations, then we can uh, then we can get this Z11, Z12 and Z13. So these are like the operations that are going on at the e each node level, right? This is the operation which is going on the first node, second node, and this is the third node, right? And then we get the Z11, Z12 and Z13. And then uh, we can uh, denote this as Z1, right? So Z1 is nothing but the stacking of each node's output on top of each other. And once we have the Z1, we will pass through an activation function which we will uh, get as A1, right? So A1 is nothing but the hidden layer output from the uh, first layer, right? And A1 is nothing but the stacking of this each of this A's, right? So this is my A1. Right, and once we get the A1, then using this A1, we can calculate the Z12, right? And uh, we can also get the A21, which is like the final layer output, and which is also similar as Y pred or Y hat or A. We, we can call it uh, anything from this, like either Y hat or Y pred or A, right? So this is the my final layer output, right? Which will be, compared with the actual output to calculate the loss, right? Now let's see, let's try to understand how the dimensions are working and how we can calculate the dimensions from each of the linear and nonlinear operations, right? So uh, this is my first linear operations. So what I am doing is I'm multiplying my W1 with X. So my the shape of my W1 is 3 comma 3 and the shape of my X is 3 comma 1. Right, and also the shape of my B is 3 comma 1, right? So if we do a dot product, my inner dimensions are kind of matching. So the output of this operation should be 3 comma 1. So this 3 comma 1 will be added to this 3 comma 1, which is nothing but the bias. And we will finally get the output as 3 comma 1 as Z1, right? So once we have the Z1, we can also get the nonlinear nonlinearity from this layer or the first layer which will be again of the shape of 3 comma 1, right? So this is the output from my first layer or the hidden layer, right? So this is the output from the hidden layer. We have only one hidden layer for the examples which we are looking in. Once we get the output, which is nothing but A1, right? So we have the input, which is A1, which is going into inside this Z2. Right, so this A1 will be used here to calculate the Z2. Now also the here, if you see and match the inner dimensions, like the W2's dimension is 1 comma 3 and A1's dimension is 3 comma 1. So the inner dimensions are matching. So we will, after doing the dot product, we will have a shape of 1 comma 1. So this 1 comma 1 will be added to this 1 comma 1 and we will finally get this 1 comma 1 shape output for Z2. Right, and the Z2 will be passed through an activation function, and in the end we will get an output of 1 comma 1 for A2. My A2 is nothing but Y hat or Y pred, right, or Y prediction from the final output layer, right. So this is how the forward propagations are working. I know this is bit bit of confusing like all these operations. So if you are not understanding it, I, I would request you to go through this uh, from the starting of this video and slowly if you write it down in the pen and paper and understand the shape of each of the nodes output and then it would be much more easier to understand for you, right? Yeah, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you like this one and in the next video we will go through how the back propagation is working with the help of gradient descent along with chain rule right 
So yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks for watching this video.